My dear friends, it's that time of the year when we look forward to saying a big goodbye to the past year and a big welcome to the year that is to come. The calendars in our houses will change. The electronic devices will begin to reflect the year 2023. And definitely, at midnight, there will be a deafening sound of crackers and cheering in the places where you live. And though the new year is an important event, in the eyes of the church, the solemnity is not of the new year, but rather that of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. So what is this solemnity all about? History takes us back to 431 AD, when the Council of Ephesus was convened. At that time, the major controversy facing the church was Nestorianism. This doctrine, which is identified with Nestorius, Patriarch of Constantinople, essentially states that Jesus existed as two persons, the man Jesus and the divine Son of God or Logos, rather than as a unified person. They also rejected the term Theotokos, that is Mother of God, for the Virgin Mary, suggesting instead the title Christotokos, Mother of Christ. Because in their opinion, Mary gave birth to only the human person of Jesus and not the divine. We then have Cyril of Alexandria who argues against Nestorius. He emphasized the divinity of Christ. And therefore, if Christ is divine, then we have to also acknowledge the divine maternity of Mary too. Both these different views were presented to Pope Celestine I and he favoured Cyril of Alexandria's view. Mary is Theotokos, the mother of God. Mary's divine motherhood therefore gets its meaning from Jesus. Mary is divine in relation to Christ. So what happened to Nestorius? He was deposed, declared a heretic and banished. So, not a very happy ending for him. In 1974, Pope Paul VI removed the Feast of the Circumcision of Christ from the liturgical calendar and replaced it with the Feast of the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, bringing Mary's Feast back to the first day of the calendar year. Let us now consider the readings of the day. In the first reading, taken from the Book of Numbers, we witness the great benediction. This text is a beautiful blessing to begin the year. It would be a great way for the elder of the house to use this text and bless everyone to begin the new year. This text is set at a time when the people of Israel are making preparations for leaving Mount Sinai where they have been camped for almost a year. They will journey through the wilderness to the land of promise. Some of the important words in this blessing highlight very important aspects of this journey. To keep is a specific blessing given to those with safety concerns, focusing on God's sheltering the people from evil and its effects, especially as they were going to be wandering in the wilderness. The shining face of God signifies God's benevolent disposition towards others. This is a gracious move on God's part to those who are undeserving. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom, which is more than the end of aggression. This peace, this shalom, is God's word for wholeness and goodness and total satisfaction in life. This also recognizes that all blessings really come from God and without His blessing, nothing works right. In the second reading, taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, Paul highlights the point that Christ has come in the flesh, born of a woman, to free us from the old master that is the law, making possible our adoption as members of God's household. It is no longer our relationship to the law that determines our situation in the divine household. Instead, it is our relationship with Christ, the rightful son and heir, 
that determines our new status in the family. Consequently, as adopted sons and daughters, we call our father Abba and receive what children receive, blessing and inheritance. In the gospel taken from Luke, we see the shepherds visiting Mary and Joseph with the infant Jesus lying in the manger. The shepherds then proclaim the message they had received about the child Jesus, which leaves them all amazed. One of the most important statements in the gospel is, Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. What do you treasure and ponder in your heart? More often than not, we ponder upon the difficulties in our life. We ponder upon the unfinished tasks that we have to complete. And we ponder upon the future happenings. It is quite often quoted that we become what we think about. And if we spend the majority of our time thinking about problems and difficulties, then we too are soon going to become one for others. One thing that we can learn from Mother Mary is to ponder upon the workings of God in our life, not with a sense of frustration, but with a sense of surrender. Mary had to struggle to comprehend the ways of God in her life, right from the Annunciation by the angel Gabriel to the resurrection of Jesus. Mary has to trust in God's plan. Certainly, quite often she would have wondered, what are you doing God? But that doesn't make her grumpy or angry at God. Mary surrenders life with its uncertainties, with total dependence on God. She is a graceful woman forever pondering the mysterious ways of God. How much time do we spend treasuring and pondering upon the blessings that we have in our life? How often do we ponder with gratitude upon how God is present in our life? Or how often do we ponder with gratitude for all the friends and family? I believe an excellent way to start this new year will be to recall all the small and big blessings that we have received in the past year and treasure all these things in our hearts. We always want to be in the driver's seat in our life and we never want to let go of the steering wheel. But unless we let God become the driver in our life, we will always find things amiss. Being able to surrender to God will transform our lives in ways we have never imagined. Even if we do not always understand God's ways. In today's fast-paced world, we need to choose to deliberately ponder and reflect on our lives. Pondering is not always easy. When we are hurting or feeling alone, the last thing we may want to do is to reflect on our pain or loss. Yet, God invites us to ponder our gifts, our joys and our sorrows. I pray on this New Year's Day, Mother Mary, the Mother of God, may intercede for you and your family. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Wishing you all a very happy feast and a happy new year. God bless.